Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Crossover. Starring Josh Johnson and Chris McGill. Featuring Christina Thorson. And of course, you, the Instagram live chat. Now, sit back and enjoy this week's edition of The Crossover. Powered by Card Ladder. So welcome everybody to The Crossover. Today is Friday, December 30th. The final episode of The Crossover for the year 2022. Don't take a long pause after you say the final episode of Crossover. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic pause. <laughs> Uh, okay, and so mail days and announcements. I have two mail days. Do you have any? I do not. And Christina, you might have a few mail days. Yeah, they're not in front of me. So. Uh, all right, I'll go quickly. Uh, first up, I have a gift from one of our great friends. Oh. This is a, a 2020 Select Prism Blue Die Cut Christian McCaffrey BGS 10. Just want to say, I don't know if he wants to be named for sending it, but thank you, buddy, for that. The other one uh, is a 2018 Chronicles Marquee Gold, Luca, numbered 9 of 10. Nice PSA 8. Uh, so those are the two pickups for this week. I actually sent this to the Luca chat when uh, Ball Mark cards was selling it and then Christina saw it and she said you need to take that back I want to buy that and so we did whenever I see the marquee logo I just it looks so much like the Knicks logo <laughs> yeah. well that's perfect actually considering this week it's like the same font same kind of like same colors same kind of location of the text in the bowl yeah <laughs> shout out to the New York Knicks organization all right, now let's go to our announcements. Josh, take it away, buddy, because we have one of our greatest announcements in the history of our app, I would say. This feature is made for you, Chris. It's just like a ton of data. <laughs> we run a, call. a periodic table of data, as uh, Steve Arbor We were on a call the other day, and it was Christina's idea on how to lay it out, but Chris was basically like, I don't care how you do it. I just want all the data. I don't care. I don't want any shortcut. I don't want like a you know a piece of it. I just want all of it. Right. Okay. So on any card profile from cards within the ladder, so those are verified cards. You'll see this new little icon next to pop, and it's also in the drop down menu. So it says view population report. So we click that. It pulls up this huge screen of the periodic table, and we've got some like high level data that it will show you so it gives you the total population across PSA, BGS, SGC and CSG, total gems aggregated gem rate and it also shows you when this pop was last updated by one of those grading companies, so like when, when a new card comes in basically, which is kind of neat and then it breaks it down by company, so PSA first and then I don't know if you knew this, but each of these have links uh, that take you out to like the set population report for that set so you could like look at other players in the set too if you'd like. And it does that for all the grading companies. And then it does a breakdown of all, all of the grades that are in the in the pop report for that company. So if you don't see the grade, that means there are none of that grade. So I, it goes all the way down to like 1.5s and 1s and auth and everything. So like if you go to you know like vintage cards, this will be even bigger. It'll basically have like every grade. If I go to like the Jordan Fleer, I'll see that one. Everyone loves that card. Jordan, you ever seen this card before? Uh, I don't know. It, it, I haven't looked at an auction in the last three hours. So. <laughs> and you can click on any grade, and it'll pull up. It'll pull up the same report for all of them. It's just that, like the one that you're currently looking at, highlights it in green. Um, so look at look at this. There's like so many different grades. You get the pop report for every grade, every company, and then the other versions of the grades that we have in our system, you'll see the actual CL value below it. So for cards like this, you can kind of, you know, eyeball it and compare all the different grades and kind of fill the gaps of what the value might be for the ones in between. And then we still have the population growth reports and we just move those to the bottom. So that stays the same. So you can still track how the population moves over time within our system. 
And that's something that we do internally. But the rest of the data you see here is provided by Gemrate. So thanks to Ryan for, for spending a couple months with me getting this all set up. It was a lot of work on his end, a lot on my end. So we're pretty excited about this. That's it. That's awesome. So clearly it's on the web application because you were just accessing it from the browser. And uh, browser on mobile is a decent way. I know you don't like this, but browser on mobile is a decent way to use the app as well. I know a few of us curmudgeons who do it that way sometimes. But what about the native app? Is it possible to access this stuff on the native app that you get in the app store yeah. for Apple and Android? It's live on both as of yesterday. Um, and so on the native app, when you go to a profile, you'll see a big button that says view population report yes. uh, below like the stats. So it's the same. And everything looks exactly the same, basically, just in mobile form, all the same. Florence. I'm so excited about this feature. You know, we had a question. I'll just skip to this question now. Um, we had a question come in today from Most of Nine's Basketball Cards, trying to troll us a little bit. David. Yeah, David. He said, what are your top five favorite card letter features added in 2022? And I said, this one is my favorite one. Even though we just like snuck it in the very end, it's such, uh, it's, it's, I was telling you, it's like a second card letter app. It's like a whole <laughs> different user experience in a, in a way. It's like a whole second card profile for cards, which is really cool. But so I said, this is my first favorite. Camera search is my second favorite. I mean, it's, it's such a, a low key, like amazing feature is that you can just take a scan or a picture of your card and you can, you can run it against 50 million sales and it's highly accurate. Uh, third, I said custom indexes. Fourth, I said public showcase links. And then fifth, the ability to customize your dashboard. All features added in 2022. So that was my list, Josh. I don't know if you agree, disagree, want to reorder it. Um, I don't. Yeah, I don't use camera search either. Like, I think I've used it like twice since we launched it. But I'm sure other people. I hope other people enjoy that. But yeah, I just that's just not something I use. I, I like searching with text. I'm just more used to it. Custom indexes, showcase. Uh, CSV upload, I like that one because it got people to stop bugging me about it because that was like <laughs> <laughs> our number one. Most that one and just upload support. my spreadsheet. You just have all my cards. Can that happen? That one and currency support because we have a question coming later. Someone asked like, what country do a lot of our members yeah. come from? Right. There's a lot. Uh, we have a lot because people really wanted different currencies, and now that that's out, people it seems like they're using it because I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, good. Okay. All right. Can I just say that um, a lot of people use the week between Christmas and the New Year to fuck off at work and just end the year, you know? Christina never misses an opportunity to uh, give us a pat on the back. No. <laughs> okay, point taken, Christina. No one else does, Got so we I know. better do it for All right. That's when we do the most work because... Other people are, you know, we can like focus, right? It's like the quiet time. We have less meetings and all that crap. For sure. Yeah. It's been a great holiday season for the card letter team. All right. Uh, so, first question. Hey, I do have mail days. You do have mail days. Oh, she does. Okay, she does have a mail day. Come here. These are my mail day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice. I got some. I got some very nice sneakers for Christmas in the mail. They're still, they're still white. They are so, so so very white because I only wear them across the street to <laughs> the arena. <laughs> Did you say Luca wore them to one of the games you went to or on TV? He was wearing them last he was night. Them last night. I'm sorry. You the okay? Yeah, you rolled over my toes. So. Sorry. He was wearing the, those exact colors? Yeah, he was wearing that exact Yeah, that, those exact colors. Yeah. It was nice. It was really nice. Uh, Christine actually wore those around the house when she first got them. I did. And she never does that. I don't. <laughs> so, she was really How did she put the shoes on? 
how did you put them on? She already had socks on, if I'm not mistaken. No. Oh. I what a nightmare. Off. I had, uh, they were, they were like thick socks because it was cold that day. So I just take them off and then I put socks, I put like sneaker socks on. Mm. And then I put a sock on and then a shoe on and then a sock on and a shoe on. All right. Uh, okay. First question is from, from, what are we doing here? Who says, I hear. Here, Josh and Hoge are matched up in the fantasy football Super Bowl. Congratulations to you, my friend. And he says, who is winning and why? So, honestly, nobody ever cares about anybody else's fantasy roster. I'm well aware of that. <laughs> but let me, just, let me just put this up because this is the championship. And I'm just going to explain to you guys why Josh is going to win. I'm going to lose. So we're just going to get that jinx out of the way. I'm just going to congratulate Josh live on I the air now. I think your team's projected to win, right? You have a higher projection? Is that? Well, we know those projections are. <laughs> I base my lineups off of those. <laughs> those projections. <laughs> if, I, if only those projections actually were accurate. Okay. So Josh is trotting out. And Josh, you got screwed because you were crushing with Lamar Jackson at QB. But you're rolling out. For this week, Jared Goff, Saquon Barkley, Fournette, Justin Jefferson, who's been the best fantasy player all year, which very much scares me. It's, and Barkley has been crushing it again, too. Tyler Lockett, Noah Fant, Jarek McKinnon, Amari Cooper, and Zach Moss. And are you, are, is there, what about Gabe Davis? Is he going to get some love here? Are you going to sub him in? or? Dude, I've been playing him. All, I've played him every week all year. I've stayed faithful. But he's only had one good game for me. It's just been like kind of a slug fest with him. And I want to swap him out for Zach Moss. So we'll sure. see how that goes. All right. And I'm rolling out Mahomes, McCaffrey, Connor, Mike Evans, Waddle, Kittle, Ramondre Stevenson, who was just like a Hail Mary draft pick who turned out, DJ Moore, and Deontay Johnson. And then my only real decision is do I start Josh Allen, who's at Cincinnati, or do I start Mahomes, who's home versus Denver, but with a new coach, but who also just gave up 50 points to the Rams? Do, uh, did you get a lot of trade offers for one of those quarterbacks? At the beginning of the year, like two or three Mahomes trade offers came in, but I just ignored them because they were not good. I should have probably made some trade offers to you once Lamar went down, but I'm rolling with Jared Goff. Dude, Goff has been solid enough. Like, He's projected for 19. Mahomes projected for 21. Allen's projected for 23, but I just don't get it. Like, he's on the road in Cincinnati. I don't know. But anyway, there you go, folks. That's the championship matchup for inquiring minds. Well, I've done fantasy football for, like, 15 years now, and here's what's going to happen. It's a coin flip. We have no <laughs> idea who's going to win. It's, 50, it's literally 50-50. No, like, they're our teams win. are – I'm just congratulating I mean, you on air right now. You got this. Don't even sit, don't even check your lineup. You don't even need to look. You got this thing wrapped up, man. You got this. Well, in your first year, you made the finals, so that's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, I might need to retire on top. I don't know. We both do. We both made the – I mean, <laughs> we just happened to both make the finals. I don't know that it's any uh... – No. Better to be lucky than good. Yes, exactly. Last year, I didn't make the playoffs, so, yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah. And, and I'm facing Stiff Arm Wax in my other Fantasy League's finals. <laughs> so, I could go over two, or I think that's what's going to happen, actually. All right. You'd, you'd rather win ours, though, because there's actual money involved. There are. There's money involved in that one, but there is a name on a trophy in the other. We have, we have a tro trophy, too. Nice. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, for next question, Stacking Slabs says, so much happens in a year in the hobby. We acquire cards we never dreamed we could own. We make friendships. We rally around common interests and so much more. <clears throat> what, what is your proudest accomplishment of 2022? It could be related to your collection, to your business, to your relationships in the hobby. P.S., Thank you for taking the time to answer a sports card question on your pizza podcast. <laughs> I got some uh, suggestions of what, of like a future potential podcast centered around like a 50, 50 split of pizza and cards. So I might have to mold that one over. Um, man, we, we, we got some of this last week and we, you know, it's really isn't our thing. Like, <laughs> 
especially like saying I'm proud of something I did. That's not really my thing. I've got, uh, I've got, an, I've got an answer if you want to think. While save I, me. No, just um, save me. While I blab on for a few seconds. My answer to this question is just surviving. That's what I'm most proud of is just making it through in 2022, through the ups and the downs, through the, you know, the tectonic shifts that have taken place in the industry to, you know, scandals and so on and so forth. Collection values plummeting, <laughs> uh, <laughs> cards flooding marketplaces, you know, I, that's, that's my proudest accomplishment is just, it's just trying to stay steady, riding it out and make it all the way through to 2022 to see 2023. So survive it. Here, I got one. I'm, I'm proud of how much restraint I've shown just tearing people apart on nice. Instagram more, more than I did. Let's go. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good, I'm proud for not destroying more people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of how much uh, shit beast I bought. <laughs> nice, nice. I'm proud of how much pizza I ate. Oh, dude, I ate so much pizza this year. Let's go. Let's, what's the one that I really like down here? Elliot's. Elliot's. He made us order it when his parents were here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it showed up uh, all smashed. Like it got like smashed in the box or something. Yeah. And I still ate the deformed pieces with great pleasure. Gross. All right. Christina, do you have anything that you're proudest of in 2022? I mean. <sighs> I'm proud of it all. Oh, Stiff Arm says, are you guys proud of that three on three in AC? Oh, yeah, the oh, skunk. Yeah. Oh, there, we should have said that. That 11 0 on uh, Tim, Geo, and Alex? Yeah. And oh, yeah. Stiff, Stiff got that really sweet clip of that three that I hit. I love watching that clip. <laughs> you know, Stiff's in on all that footage, but he might need to come out with an extended release of, uh, of those games. So, okay, Christina, what you're proud of it all, you say? Yeah, and I want to second Josh. Like, I'm proud that I didn't like tear people new ones more. <laughs> the self restraint I showed in 2022 was amazing, but I just <laughs> don't think it's going to last to 2023. So, fair warning, the filter is coming off. Okay, all right, all right. Wow. You know how the you know when like the Roadrunner's trying to run and his feet are just doing like the circles. Yes, that's. Great. Christina in 2023. Like, eventually, <laughs> the feet are going to just move forward. Uh, <laughs> all right. Nice. Uh, 504 person says, who has more pizza content, Bill Simmons or the crossover? Okay, so I told, I texted you about this, right? They were talking about Domino's. Let me, does it, do I need to go any further? Those fools are talking about Domino's. We're over here talking about Elliot's. So. Dude, we were on – we – discarded with Domino's a year ago. <laughs> Dude, he's like, you know, he does like the Miller Lite ads and you, I always fast forward, but if I like am not near my phone to fast forward it, I listen to it and he's like, oh, what do you want to grab? Oh, when you're watching football with your friends, what do you grab? A Miller Lite. And like, I've never, literally never been watching football with my friends and grabbed a Miller Lite bill. <laughs> Miller Lite and Domino's, could you be any more lame? Facts. I mean, we went all the way to New York to try pizza this year as a team. Yeah, the Papa John's there was really good. It was <laughs> oh, John's is really good. really good. That's right. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. And Josh made us homemade pizza this year. Well, that was, oh, that did happen this year. That was in Arizona. Is that your proudest accomplishment, those homemade pizzas? I forgot about that. When I made you guys pizza. There you go. Yeah. Those are good. pretty good. All right. Spurs card 21. What are your 2023 <laughs> predictions? Oh, but he, he adds more. Plans, okay. plans and or hangouts. So, maybe, you know, if you, we don't have a prediction, but do we have plans? Well, we're going to be at the National, right? That's that's always yeah, that's, happening. Yeah, that's good. And the Mint Collective. Yeah, we're awesome. The Mint Collective. Yep, two big shows. What else? What other plans or hangouts? We, we You guys are not invited, but the three of us – will be at the Lakers Mavericks game in February yes. to, to watch LeBron break the all-time career 
single season well, or a career score. Josh record. has put in his request to LeBron that he not break it until he's in Dallas. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're waiting to see how much Josh's friendship to LeBron matters to him. Well, he had Dude, 47 he, tonight, so, like, that's, like, two games in one. Yeah, I don't know how many games. You have, to, you have to think he'll probably sit out a game, so he has to make up for it now. Hmm. Yeah, if he keeps this up, he's going to be breaking that <clears throat> too early. Stop, yeah, now we're, like, we're going to get to the point where, like, I need you to score 24 tonight and then just call it a night. <laughs> Would you rather it be, like, let's just say, you know, LeBron just needs two, so you just know he's going to break it in the first quarter. Or, like, he needs, like, 23, and, like, the game has the drama of unfolding, and you're not quite sure. Uh, like, I'm at the game? Is that what you're yep. saying? If yes. I'm at the game, I want it to be one. I just I want to make sure. <clears throat> Fair. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. He has 25. That, that Dallas game will be the 25th game. Um, he's going to have to sit. Out because he's on pace for like twenty one. I think twenty one. Okay, but that's not bad. Like this is it could be worse. Yeah, he might. He'll he'll sit out. Like, he'll sit out like a back to back. He didn't sit out the last back to back like I thought he would. <gasps> because he's in this mode now. He's in like twenty eighteen mode where he's like he knows Davis is out and he's just like fuck it. I'm just gonna play every game. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Oh, it could ha- it could happen though. Like this really really. Good. And I'd rather it be this way. I'd rather be like oh he's. 29 away and, and we're 25 away because then like I don't want to be four on that side I want to be four on this side yeah so like yeah all right this is good okay um doc collects cards says in 25 years Wait, he's only 29 points away no no games oh okay. it, doc collect card says in 25 years or so will we look back and say that 2020 <laughs> Will we look back and say that 2023 was the year of the collector? So will 2023 be the year of the collector, Josh? And where are people getting this idea from? Uh, uh, I mean, we've said it on the show, but, like, I mean, every year, really. I'm just going to keep giving that answer every New Year podcast I'm on. Next year is the year of the collector. It's every year. (laughs) Yeah, isn't every year the year of the collector? Like, just because someone's a flipper, investor, dealer, whatever – in whatever order, doesn't mean you have to change the way you collect. Just let them be fucktards over there. Okay. It's not 2023 yet. It's getting close. All right. Card Shop Dad says, and I put this to a poll today as well. Oh. Does, does the 2022, or maybe this should say did the 2022 hobby market draw in more or push away more participants and most people said the 2022 market pushed more away yeah i think i did too just because like i felt like more people left right yeah i i'd love to hear the case to the contrary <laughs> <laughs> you know? i'd love to hear who why what's the reason behind the 2022 hobby market which absolutely took a dump this year unless you collect pre-war vintage or hockey your sector of this hobby probably took a dump so you know maybe the thesis is like hey a downturn in a market that was really hot you know the year the few years before maybe that brings in opportunists who are looking to buy lower prices or something but like i think on the whole Negative momentum generally pushes people away. Uh, is it just me, or is this year like the same as the last six years for you personally? Like, oh yeah, no, I don't do anything differently. I, <laughs> just like someone's like, "What was your, you know, best card compared?" I'm like, pretty, pretty much standard stuff. Maybe like you know, five or so grails, a new PC I added. It's pretty much the same as always. Right. Yep. Ditto. Okay. AP Cards 23 says, what's your process when you want to find a new card to chase? For each of you guys, how much is it the thrill of the chase versus the attraction of the card? Hmm. Um, I mean, most of those we've like had them in our, you know, in our view for, 
for a while. So it's not like it comes up like, hey, I need this card as of today. It's usually like a lot of planning once you start the player PC. But I would say like scouring Instagram, looking for tags, if I can find them, looking for collectors, digging through old posts, stuff like that. Looking through sales history to see if I can reverse engineer where it is today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know about the process. That's just – the process is just kind of what Josh was saying about just dumb it down to my level. Just find out what their best cards are and then get as many of them as I can find it or afford. And then make a bounty when you really get frustrated. <laughs> yeah, it gets bad enough, you make a bounty. And then uh, – the, but the other part of the question is how much of it is the throw of the chase versus how much is the attraction of the card? You know, for me, attraction of the card is at least nine tenths of it. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's all about the card. The thrill of the chase is great. Don't get me wrong, but that's not the motivator. That, that's the consequence of just wanting to find the wanting the card so badly. You know, we talk a lot about the your favorite moment is like we. You know, it's either like when you're paying for it, or when it's in the mail and it's not to you yet, or it's like when you open it. Um. I'd say one change this year for me is that I've learned learned to kind of make the the you know owning it or the cards I've had for a few years like enjoying them trying to make those as as like awesome as you know the the mail day type moments. It's hard to replicate. It. Obviously, it's not exactly the same. But like if we're not going to enjoy cards we have gotten over the last few years, what you know what's the point of like? Because like you just said, you know it's the card itself, right? It's not necessarily just the chase, but it's like, this is the card I've wanted. So you've had to enjoy that McCaffrey Black or the Jokic. You can't really just, you can't justify spending money and all that hard work just for like 10 minutes of, you know, 10 minutes of opening it. It's got to be more than that. <laughs> That's so true. Now, I mean, one of the best parts of having a collection is just getting the urge to go look at six and a half years worth of work that, I put into that collection and then just laying it out and enjoying it and thinking about how to make it better. If it was all about, if it was truly all about the anticipation of the mail day and stuff, we would just sell the card, buy it back, you know, <laughs> sell it, buy it. it would be very transactional and you know, you could just constantly synthesize, but it's not, you know, those things are only so cool because of, you know, the card being unique and novel and special to your collection in the first place. Can I have you may. When, so I just started this, like, with that marquee. Well, I think you're going to start going a little bit, so. Come on over. Come on over. So, with the marquee, I started doing a... Uh, you center yourself a little bit. Well, I can't get close because your chair is like... Um, with the marquee, I started doing a research project of Luca cards. So, I find... The fun also in the research mm. before you even start going after a specific card. You're speaking Josh's language here. Yeah, I saw him nod. Yeah. 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 So I enjoyed that part of the hunt of a new card as well. Yeah. That's yeah. What I had to say. Good. That's great. Josh, talk, you, you love the research. You'll go down 20 rabbit holes yeah. and find, find every collector of a player. <laughs> yeah, I do that with everything. Like, when I'm going to buy new headphones or something or when I started running, it's like I watch hours and hours of YouTube and Google searches and stuff. <laughs> it's a little bit different with cards because we don't really have like a Google search to research, you know, so it, it becomes like uh, a tougher challenge and a little bit more like in-depth research you have to do. And it's, it's like a nuanced research. Like you said, we're going through Instagram. We're going, you know, messaging people in China in the middle of the night while we should be sleeping, but that's, it's the only time they'll respond type stuff. <laughs> True. All right. Art Connoisseur said, is at Victory Sports Cards right? Are sports cards a lifestyle? And I think he's referencing the introduction video to uh, Sports Cards Live with Jeremy Lee where he has a line that says sports cards is a, 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 a lifestyle or something. So what do you say? Are sports, are sports cards a lifestyle? Um, I guess it's like a cultural thing. Is that kind of a synonym? Uh, maybe. Like it's part part of our it's part of our culture where we talk about it in day to day, and it becomes who we are. I guess it's a lifestyle. Yeah, look, I'm 
I'm gonna get a little bit anal here and just look up the definition of the word lifestyle. Yeah, I was like, right. it kind of feels like it's different, but you might just nail it with this definition here. Yeah. So, oh, great. I love when dictionary definitions, lifestyle, the style of a life. <laughs> this, this one is the way in which a person or group lives. So we need some more definitions here. Come on. Because I'm, I'm saying like, look, you know, how, how all encompassing is a lifestyle? Because I think for most people, they're not a lifestyle, they're a hobby. They're something that's yeah. um, come compartmentalized and it's kept right here and then you have your family and then you have maybe your other hobbies and you have your job and, you know wait, leisure other wait, things wait, wait, wait. sports like people separate all those things <laughs> i think most people all put them to sports cards like your friends are people you know through sports cards your job is sports cards like your family is also centered around sports cards and all you do is talk about sports cards you know anybody like that okay uh, so look, so here from Miriam Webster, here's an example in a sentence. She envied the lavish lifestyles of wealthy people. Eating right and exercising are essential to having a healthy lifestyle. Uh, this way, the future pet parents can pick the pet that matches their lifestyle. So look, if, if sports cards are a lifestyle, that means, like to Christina's point, it's all-encompassing. It's, yeah. it's influencing influencing all the different compartments or many of the compartments of your life. Yeah. Cause it's like that one about eating, eating and exercise, being a healthy life, being a part of a healthy lifestyle, the lifestyle of being healthy wouldn't just be in like food. It would be in, you know, all these areas. So they would have to bleed into everything, which I don't know. I don't really talk about cards when I'm running or, you know, it's like, I'm not sure that it bleeds in necessarily. I feel like it's more of a hobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think hobby is the right description. Okay. Uh, for Pac Nicholson, <laughs> Jose says lifestyle is the nicer way of saying degenerate. Okay. <laughs> uh, Pac Nicholson says, have you ever forgotten about an auction in the final? Oh, here we go. Are you ready for this? Have you ever forgotten about an auction in the final minutes and missed out on a card? Like you have the tab open, you're watching the countdown, waiting for the final seconds to snipe it, but you get distracted by a LeBron 2013 highlights video on YouTube. It's very specific, Pat. And you completely miss the end of the auction. <laughs> Has this ever happened to any of you? Losing a card without ever bidding on it, and what would you call it? Oh. Usually he comes up with the name, so what, he's making us do the work now. Yeah, he was supposed to call it something so that we can name the title of the show then. Right. Uh, he's slacking. So this is what I mean about slacking the week between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> I used to have on eBay my app, on my Android at least, when I pulled down the notification for 15 minutes, there would be two little options, and one of them would be like, give me another notification when there's two minutes left, give me another when there's one minute. And I haven't seen that in a while. Well, maybe it's gone, but that's what eBay really needs to do. Like, do a notification at 15 minutes, two minutes, one minute. Like, just blast me with notifications so I don't forget. I just... I've never had that option on iPhone, just so you know. I think that was special to you. Andrew. But they should just do that. Like, it should just be a default that you get the notification. Like, 15 minutes, great. Now I have to wait. Like, this is worthless, basically. I think it's happened to everybody because of the uh right for me it's 14 minutes which i always found to be a really random number they, it gives me a 14 minute warning and i hope there's research or something supporting that but i <laughs> no have you ever used sniping apps or tried no. any of that stuff no, i never have no i don't trust it i'd rather i like to be a part of the finale there yeah same here yeah but yes i've i've missed because that's so what do we call it? It's mostly 90s basketball cards. There's one in the chat. Snipe fart. S snipe fart? Like a brain <laughs> fart. Like a brain fart. Okay. Oh, okay. Old highway card says snipe fart. I like that one. Yeah, I like that. All right. Do you think people will click to listen to an episode that's called snipe fart? What was oh, yeah. last week's called? <laughs> last week's was a, was a red emoji with eight sides. It was stop. Yeah, it was a stop sign, but it sort of. It was a red octagon. See, Catalyst card says that's an option on iPhone too. If you swipe down the first notification, you get those choices. I'm telling you, because there's an iPhone and Android. There's like the notification preview, 
which which is like the small version. If you swipe down, some of them expand into bigger notifications, and usually that's where you get the options. I see. Okay. All right. So I need to do that. A. Try it. Try it. Test it out. Uh. Do we? Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, David said. Uh, okay. Mostly ninety says. Here's his names. The Bueller bid. Mm. In reference to uh, that movie. <laughs> Ferris Bueller. Right Ferris Bueller. There you are. You just chose Nick as your moderator. <laughs> You're not supposed to be looking. You're supposed to be. I got a notification that this live is moderated now. <laughs> and not by you either. Okay, let's go. Nice. Uh, the other ones here. The Absent Assassin. <laughs> Sounds like a thriller novel. And. The, <laughs> The ADHD fucked me. <laughs> I just call that squirrel. Squirrel. All right. So <laughs> I, I think I think one was David. Look, I appreciate respect the thought, but I think snipe fart might have just checked a few more boxes considering like the, the low brown the low brown nature of the host of this show. <laughs> I like snipe fart. <laughs> All right. Kobe 8123 1996 13, aka Mohammed, says if using comps to negotiate, do you think it is petty or too much to also use a comp minus fees calculation to negotiate? You know what he means by that? Yeah, I do this one with auction houses because the Buyer's premium and the seller fees are so high that it's like <laughs> you, can you know, a card for sells gold, for, bro, but. a card sells for let's say 10k, right? Yeah. And they want to use that comp, and I'm like, I'll give you nine, right? Because it's going to cost you if you sold it with golden today. First of all, it's going to take you two months to send it, go through all the thing, get the pay, you know, finish the auction, wait for your payment, or, and then you'll end up getting nine. Or I'll just give you the nine right now. Like, this is actually a deal for you. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that, that's the... That never works, by the way. <laughs> 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 never. <laughs> People do not want to hear all that, bro. Right. But it is true. It, you know, if, if you're calculating the seller's take-home, uh, it doesn't make sense to pay full auction price when, you know, the seller's never going to see that. So I get it. I understand why people negotiate that way. All right. Is there anything wrong with it? No. No. And I, I, you know, I think I think a reasonable seller will take it into consideration. You know, but but maybe the the real force that you're up against is buyers who aren't going to think that way. So there's, there's there's other buyers who just are willing to pay the full count. I haven't been engaged in a reasonable negotiation <laughs> over a card in months and it's so <laughs> moving it's like say more about this what do you mean by this it's it mostly devolves into the seller saying something about how they aren't willing to take that big of a yeah. loss yes when did that become a thing this year 2022 that's if you want an, an answer for all your end of the year roundup questions there it is that's the only trend i've seen is like this year for some reason i know the reason but it's just so how, annoying how like i don't they, care what you what your loss is i didn't i'm not negotiating with your past self of what you bought it for a year ago i'm negotiating what it's worth today yeah no i don't i mean how would a used car market work if everybody <laughs> was like i can't let this go for less than i'm into it <laughs> It's just, uh, <laughs> I know that's not a perfect comparison, but like the, the point is, here is like yeah. stuff is worth what the market bears. Like, Well, it's because we went through, through like a four or five year period in cards where people are just, no, no matter what you paid, no matter what card it was, you ended up making money if you sold it later down the line. And so we're just sort of conditioned to still have those negotiations. And now that it's shifted this year, it's tough for people to, I mean, it's fine. Like, if I'm the one reaching out to you and I'm, like, asking you to sell, you can say that line to me. But if you're the one that's posting it for sale and you use that line, that's when I'm like, come on. You said you were selling. 
Are you actually selling, or are you just saying that? <laughs> right. Yep. I. That's that's a fun topic. Okay. Uh, let's go. So, related to this question, Drake's PC has a comment. How do you suggest moving on when someone has a rare card that you need in your collection, but they are unwilling to negotiate <laughs> rationally? This is a weekly question, by the way. From Drake. From, okay. And then, like, I asked him to elaborate on it a little bit this time. He, and he goes, I've encountered this a bit lately, we know, and it's frustrating. And then I said, like, you know, say more or something. And he goes, well, people... <laughs> All right, he goes, well, people think Peyton Manning and Drew Brees are the most most undervalued guys in the hobby, and they want to price the cards where they think they should be and not where they really are. What have we done? I think we owe Drake and the community an apology for talking too much about Peyton Manning and Drew Brees cards. <laughs> Drew Brees is the one that started the whole trash can thing. <laughs> in uh, fairness, it was in reference to his skills but, as a commentator. Right. <laughs> uh, like, like, what the fuck, man? I just feel like we're being gaslit. You, you and I you, are being gaslit. You commented on... So on one of those, maybe I think it might have been this one. And I, I literally didn't even read what you said, and all I, I responded to it and just said Peyton. Like I just like knew. <laughs> <it was> gonna... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like all year, we've been fielding questions about like I was Peyton and Drew Brees. It's really more Peyton. Like there's there are really passionate Peyton collectors out there who are like he's undervalued. His cards are so low compared to modern quarterbacks and stuff. And now now the shoe is on the other foot, and we need to figure out why people are charging more for their cards which one is it which one is it are they undervalued or are they overvalued because i just i need to know which, what's the company line because look yeah. if if people have these rare Peyton manning cards and they want a lot of money for, for them and Peyton manning you know is undervalued in the market what makes them properly valued somebody comes along and pays more for them that's and then you have the comp and then the, now somebody has paid this for the card. Like literally, that's what, that's how indexes change. Is people pay more for the the card that was cheaper before? So I'm just, I was at a loss, Josh. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like how we can answer this question or put some effort towards it, but. I mean, it's kind of the same thing as my last response, which is like, there's nothing you can do. Like, it just keeps happening this year. It's kind of similar to the, the, you know, this is what I paid last comp thing. It just keeps happening. But on, you know, same answer as always. If it's ultra super rare and this is the only chance to get it, you know, take, you know, either take their price or or don't. I think. Well, okay. So, what do you think about this? Um, do you think that people are saying that phrase? You know, I'm I'm into it for more or whatever. Because they believe that the market's going to recover to a point where they won't have to take a loss, you know, are, are they thinking like, oh, this, we're going to get back to those prices in a couple of years. If I have to wait, I'd rather just wait and not take the loss, you know, on paper. I'd, I would rather just like hide this card away for five years. Is that what you think people are thinking? Maybe, maybe. And in all honesty, I'm, I'm, uh, even though it's very frustrating that people want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to be able to sell cards at the price that they were worth six months ago. Well, it's like, really, it's like you have to make up your mind. If you want to sell it, then you respect the market value. Otherwise, you don't really want to sell it. But I do take confidence in the well-being of the market going into the future from the fact that people are not going to just keep undercutting each other. Like, they have a price, and they're not going to go below it. And even if the market bears a lower price for that card right now, then they'd rather keep it. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think there is a, a sense of people waiting out the market. Yeah. Well, there is, like, the market will go back up, you know, at a certain point. It may not be tomorrow or the next month. We don't know. But, like, someone asked that question, I think, and you, you responded <laughs> with something about how you posted a story about how we haven't 
haven't seen these figures, this like downturn in the indexes of the stock market since 2008. And that was like the literal pivot point of throwing us into this like 12 year amazing run, bull run. Right. So like just because things look really, really bad, it, it come, it kind of almost like more indicates that something good's around the corner. Right. Like, so just maybe people are thinking that. You know? Yeah. Just to rattle off those numbers, uh, the, Dow is down 9% in 2022. The S&P is down 20% S&P 500 in 2022. And the NASDAQ composite is down 33% in 2022. And those numbers were, were funny or interesting to me because like the ultra modern players, the Lucas and the Mahomes, those guys were down like 35, 40% this year, similar to the NASDAQ. The CL50 is down 20% this year, similar to the S&P. And then, like, Vintage is down 6%, similar to the Dow. So I found those comparisons imperfect, but so, there's something. There's something to the fact that, like, just like other markets get stratified and stuff that was, like, tech-heavy, you know, got mm -hmm. hurt more. Well, in our world, stuff that was prospect-heavy got hurt more. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Dude, Tesla is down seventy percent in the last year. Yeah, yeah. And I want to. Uh, what Ankesh says here is very true. He says just because twenty twenty two is down thirty percent doesn't mean twenty twenty three can't be down thirty percent as well. And he's right about that. Totally. Yeah, he's super right about that. So, like, the question that was asked on this topic was from Ben, cross country runner. One, he said. In 1989, the Japanese Nikkei, Nikkei, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Japanese Nikkei index hit an all-time high in 1989 and then subsequently crashed and hit, and it has still not recovered back to its 1989 prices. And I, I've heard of this loosely. I went and I pulled up this index and he is right. It, it went to 39,000 in 1989 and then the closest has ever gotten since was like in 2021 it got up it, it went north of 30,000 and then today it's like 27,000 okay so he says will we look back at the pandemic similarly for cards will it be full of all-time highs that were never reached again or do you think cards eventually make it back to pandemic pricing and so like i just want to caveat this that like there are cards setting all-time highs every day so it's this it's really tough to blanket discuss cards on the whole cards are way down this year and some like the cl50 is as a proxy for sort of the most visible cards is down 20 percent this year and so my answer to him was basically look you know the cl50 today is at 44 percent of its all-time high the cl50 mm -hmm. got up to about 32,000 in march of 2021 of 2021 and today it's at about 14,500 so it's way way off of its all-time high and it's gonna take a lot it would take a herculean effort it would take a miracle for the cl50 to get back to 33,000 anytime soon if ever yeah so, and that, what do you think that that peak of that CL50 was like a super short window. Like it's a pretty steep spike and then spike back down. Cause it was just like total mad madness. People just buying, paying whatever. So it's That's why I think that's why you're saying it's going to be really tough. Cause it's like, I don't know that we can recreate that sort of Dude, the, the, mania the 90, that went on for that month or whatever that was. The 86 Flair Jordan PSA nine was selling for 90,000. <laughs> Today that card is worth like 13 to 15. Yeah, nuts. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. And, like, the PSA 10 getting back to 750. It's easier to do this discussion on, like, picking a few proxy cards to kind of, like, show the example of just how tough it's going to be, you know? Like, it's hard to say the index will get up that high, but it, it's hard to wrap your arms around all those cards, you know? But if you say, do you think the PSA 10 Jordan will ever get back to 750? I think most people are like, I mean, it's possible, but it, it's going to take, you know, a long time where, like, <laughs> inflation goes up 3% every year and eventually, like, 100 years from now, like, that's just what stuff's worth kind of thing. 100%. And 
a, a related question that occurs to me is, do we want that? Mm. Mm. Do we want the Jordan 86 Fleer PSA 9 to suddenly spike back to 90,000 again? I ah. vote no. With all yeah, respect you... and compassion for the people who paid that price, and I, I would love for you guys to break even, please don't misunderstand this, but for the betterment, for the well-being of the hobby as a whole, and the sustainability of the market as a whole. I hope it doesn't get to 90,000 anytime soon. I hope it's it's gradual, incremental, sustainable uh, pricing into the future. Yeah, and I think all those losses or whatever have kind of already been realized. You know, it's been a year and a half, like the dust has kind of settled on that mania and we've all kind of accepted that was a short-term thing. Some people made money, some people lost money. It was a zero sum sort of mania during that and now we're kind of at this new reality so given that information i would much prefer we don't get back to that point because i couldn't buy any goddamn cards like all the lebron cards i ever wanted i was like impossible i'm not paying 90 grand or 100 grand for like like his 50th best you know it just doesn't make any sense for me financially or like my enjoyment of the hobby because i we still like to search for certain cards and it's like if those cards are all going to be six figures it's like is this even any fun? Well said. Okay. <clears throat> really interesting historical precedent there to think about from Ben. Uh, all right. Art Connoisseur says, rest in peace, Pele. Does anybody <laughs> find it trite when legends pass and hobbyists feel the need to flex their cards? <laughs> it's, it's never uh, fun. <laughs> For the rest of us, when the card flex tidal wave begins for any reason, what do you think about it in this context, Josh? In the context of a death? Yeah. I mean, and it feels like it's maybe less of a. I guess it is still flex. Like people suck. I don't know. It's, it it sucks. I, I mean, I was annoyed just seeing all the flexing just from LeBron's game tonight. It's like, yeah, he had one good game. We already know he's good. Like, I don't understand how now all of a sudden. That one I, I say that Facebook post. <laughs> I was like, sell this card. It's his birthday today. Looking for good offers. It's like, yeah. what? <laughs> now we're using birthdays to inflate the values of our cards. We're using death, which is like, like the worst, you know, the extreme end of the worst case. But like, I don't know. Sivarm Wax calls it a cope flex. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. That's I was thinking that question was going to go the, the way of uh, when there's a death like you know eBay kind of gets flooded with yes. people trying to sell yeah and this is slightly different this is this isn't like how do you feel about the death merchants uh, in the hobby who when somebody dies oh we don't buy now you know this is about people like maybe maybe like coming across as if they're happy or something Right. Yeah. I I don't have a problem with the coke flex if there's like a story or like a nod to a great athlete that I admire mm -hmm. with it. The coke flex while available or for trade is yeah. fair distinction. Yeah, for us, especially the three of us, as like our hearts being with collecting, we kind of like try to figure out, are you trying to sell this or are you actually like trying to, you know, uh, t tell a story about your collection? It's one or the other usually. And so we just pretty much like, you know, it's binary. We're either, we're annoyed because you're trying to sell it off the news or we're excited because you're, you know, you're using this moment to tell a story. Definitely. Mad City Collector says, how do you think the correction to a more collector's market affects the way that dealers curate their display cases and portfolios. Do they stick to a hodgepodge of strictly the hottest stars? Or are they going to shift to other eras, sets, and players in order to appeal to hardcore collectors who could be repeat customers? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, dealers have always kind of had a pretty similar-ish mix of cards in my experience, no matter what the market's doing, you know, five, 10 years ago to now, and then when it was booming. 
I guess when it was booming, I just I saw like more common stuff. So I guess to answer the question, yeah, that's probably true. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but I am kind of more used to the like pre-COVID dealer, the way dealers operated pre-COVID, anyways, and it's pretty good mix of like usually the bars anyways but like more rare stuff and more fun stuff to look at yeah so you're what you're kind of saying is like the display case or the story sale full of base prism psa 10 that was it wasn't always that way that's something that happened for yes 2020 2021 i never and then, saw that. and I, I mean i saw it but like it was never that uh you know blunt and everywhere because I think was like when stuff is going up and and people are excited about values going up and there's this like wave of excitement about the market going and sports cards and everything, people are more drawn to like hold on to those really rare ones and not put them out. And like, well, if, if I'm going to make money and I can make money on anything, I'll just put out all my junk because anything's moving right now. And then when the market's going down and you need to, you need to make money. You need to put food on the table. Only that really awesome stuff is going to be able to, you're only be able to sell the really awesome stuff. That's why maybe we're seeing more of that hit auctions. People are having to continue to, you know, feed themselves basically. So this is the only thing that I can sell and make any money to, to put a dent in these bills. I can't sell base prisms anymore and, and feed myself. Bingo. That's right where I'm with it too. Okay. Frozen Inferno Collectibles says this, this question triggered me slightly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He said, you, you may not care about game use jerseys getting cut up for cards. Correct. But what if someone cut a green PMG Jordan into 10 pieces and put those into cards? If you can't have one of the remaining intact ones, would you be okay with owning a piece of one in a PMG patch card? Okay. And while I applaud the creativity of thought that went into this question, if there is ever such a thing as a PMG patch card, I'm sending my PC to auction and I'm out. (laughs) I'm all the way out. Lord forbid we, we ever have cards. I think the way I put it in my reply, I said, if there are ever cards inside of cards, I'm out. What if I'm not, that's a bridge too far for me. What if, what if, the story that was told on Cardboard Chronicles about the person who ripped up the PMG and and inadvertently ripped a green PMG gets put into cards? It gets sold, ripped up, and then they make a, they make cards of the ripped up damaged card. You know, this makes me think of Chris. Like, definitely 2021. We just heard like a lot, lot of very interesting business ideas, or like people that didn't know the space. They came in and they tried to like make a business out of it, and they like give us their idea, and we're just like, "What? No, we we like our cards, you know, this shape, and you know, like stuff like that." That reminds me of this. Card inside of a card. We have three uh, episode title contenders so far. Like I said, card and cardception. <laughs> All right, uh, that's a good one, Mike. I know that's not Jesse. Okay, let let's see that. All right, so and again, I applaud the creativity that went into that question. I'm not mad at the creativity. It was you well. said you were triggered though. So. Yeah, no, but not by the creativity. It was a it was a fun <laughs> question. <laughs> He knew what he was doing. That's why he, he made the reference to game use. Yeah, he's just he like, was... yeah, that's how you start off a question if you want to get Chris triggered. I know you love memorabilia, and then you go to, like, something that has nothing to do with memorabilia. You'll at least get his attention. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I know, Mike. I should have gone to Tennessee. That's when letting yourself go really uh, <laughs> sinks in. <laughs> yeah, I, had, I was laughing so hard when I posted that picture of you at that game and like just the whole line that i had that's my proudest moment of the year is that story that was a well done story and christina thinks that when i replied to your story i put a smiley face over her and it 
was <laughs> not over her. She was not in that picture. My hand she was not. Her, her hand was in the picture. And you put the smiley right over my hand. Well, I was watching NBA TV and that came up and I was like, holy shit. And I paused my TV to go get a screenshot to send to you. But when I pause, YouTube TV, like, uh, you know, puts like the, and it covered basically everything. So I was like, well, and I couldn't pause it at a point where you were above where the pause, you know, so I was just kind of like, so I found that one. It's like, oh, hell yes. He's doing like the. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. basically, Josh couldn't get a picture with me in the shot. Nope. So he was like, and eh, her hand is enough. And then Chris. Yeah, this is Josh's fault. Yeah, That's right. Is, and then Chris sees the picture and he goes, her hand is too much. No, I put the I put the face over it to represent you. Yeah. Happy face. Here's my response, Christina. You got a Christmas present. Did Chris get a Christmas present from me? No, he didn't. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, no, I just love that picture because you know the emoji where he's like doing that. It's not, not that. That's not the face you were making. The face you were making was just like pure oh. bliss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just yeah. like I. Everyone else is going crazy, but I'm just like, yes, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> yep, yep, that was, that was, uh, I couldn't make that face now if I wanted to. Exactly, that's exactly right. Like, you just can't, you can't catch a man making that face <laughs> unless it's, you know, in the perfect moment. That's right. All right, uh, Northwoods Card Collector says... Lupagasm. Lupagasm. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you think 2023 will be harder or easier to add a grail or a top 10 piece to your collection? And why, basically? And so my answer to this question, Josh, is I think it'll be harder because I think 2022 actually saw a lot of stuff come to market that never really was meant to come to market. It's just everything was so overheated and prices were so high that some people even sitting on casket cards sitting on grails that they intended to keep for life even they were like all right fuck it i'm selling this and uh, it's just too expensive then. and i and i think with the market like we were talking about the cl50 is a 44 percent of its all-time high you know lots of markets are down in the hobby i just i don't see as many grails coming to market next year because i don't think there's going to be as much pressure on people to sell their best cards now that the value of them has come down do you think the window we might have missed the window uh, I think that window might still be open. I, I think yeah. we might be at the, close to the tail end of it, but I think it might be open. I disagree. I think that, yeah. no, I think the economy has a way to fall, especially the housing market. Yeah. And I think that some people got in over their heads on some cards over the past two years, and they'll need to, to make some moves. The only counter I have to that is that those Cards probably aren't grails. That's the counter that I have to that. But it's a good point. Do you do you have any thoughts on this, Josh? Will it be easier or harder to pick up your grails in 2023? I'm not sure. I like both those arguments. Yeah, I can see it both ways, too. I just want people to sell me cards at last comp. That's the only thing I'm thinking while you guys are both blabbing on. Fair. Fair. All right. <laughs> like, is it going to be harder in that people are going to be less reasonable than now? Like, how much fucking harder can it be? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be worse. People are going to be like, what about comps from two years ago? I'm still holding it. God damn it. Look, if you guys are watching this on replay, respect to you, appreciate you, but you ha you guys are missing so much in the chat on nights like tonight. Yeah, the chat, I, m I missed something earlier. I have to ask you about it after. I missed something big. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the chat is just starring you, the chat. All right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I like how on that last, last question you just asked in the chat, I saw some people say definitely easier, and then other people said definitely harder. That's kind of where I'm at. Like, I don't, I don't know. Maybe somewhere in the middle. Yeah. All right, Hoops Hobby says, is the idea of the traditional super collector dead? And by super collector, I mean someone who collects all, all mm. of the cards of a player. I put this to a poll as well. And the poll was like uh, skewed pretty heavily in favor of no, that the super collector is not dead. 
Agreed. If we just are getting less, uh, dude, there was so much of that on bl- the blowout days. Like I just remember all the different uh, super collectors being on blowout. So it might just be a you know visual thing where we get more exposure to people that aren't doing that than we did before. You know, like the content creators or Instagram feeds are more catered to, uh, you know, high end Jordans of you know the same cards over and over. I'm not sure, but I I think it's probably those people still are out there. Mm. Yeah, I'm sitting right here. Christina is a person pursuing lots of oddball. Maxi and Kleba. rainbow cards of Maxi Kleba, yeah. Also, I just want to like point out that part of that is that there are so many cards created now yeah. for every rookie that I've been doing a research project of Luca rookies. He was in 28 products in 2018, just for me, 28 products. He has like unique cards. He has a total of 1,159. Yeah, so this is the next point, is that, like, being a super collector of a player whose playing days were the 50s and mm. 50s yeah. is a lot different than being a super collector who came out in the last five to eight years. Yeah. Or even the 90s. True. True. So, by, by the way, that's two mentions of Christina's Luca research project. Let's see if we can get to three or four by the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, someone gonna, messaged me. Don't look with so much hatred. Yeah, go ahead. Someone messaged me asking for help on a comp of a Jalen Hurts blue prism rookie. I think is that like the retail SSP or something, right? Uh, from Prism. Yeah, pris- like regular Prism blue. Those are those are rare, right? I know it was in twenty seventeen. I, I can was, confirm that. So Jalen Hurts would have been 2020. So anyways, I was trying to help find it on, on card letter sales history. There's so many fucking Prism Jalen Hurts cards that are blue that are not that card. Blue and, Shimmer, blue okay. Light Blue, Die Cut, Mosaic. I was like, holy Christ, I'm trying to help you find this. I have to put like 74 exclusions, and I'm like, this is why card letter exists. <laughs> I know. It, this is where image search can be very helpful. And uh, also, you know, like select, like select yeah. blue will be called the blue prism. Optics blue will be called the optic blue prism. People will, Red, white, blue. <laughs> yep, that's right. People will call uh, cards that aren't even technically prism parallels as prism anyway, just to draw the eyeballs in. Select has prism parallels that are called prism. I know, so does optic. But there's like other products that don't, but they will still, like... What's a good, good example? Like score football it doesn't have prison parallels, but you'll still see people put prison in the title. I brought it up because it's, it's like super collecting this. Good luck. You know, it's like I couldn't even super collect Jalen Hurts blue. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point, dude. Super collecting in this moment is the super collecting in 2016 would have been way easier than today, right? Absolutely. Like, super collecting today, you might just need to content yourself. Like, yeah, I'm going to get 10% of this player's cards. That'll, that's super collecting today. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Vinny Slabarino. Any guesses as to how this opens? Love the show. Always. Always enjoy the show. Do you ever pass on an important card of a player that you collect because you just don't like the way that it looks? Or does the importance of the card always trump the aesthetics of the card? For me, aesthetics always plays a role. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just beer goggling. Thanks. <laughs> That's a good potential title for the episode, beer goggling. <laughs> that is. Uh, uh, I always felt like I was in the minor- minority on this. Like People would tell me that I... I should buy a certain card, or I need this card for my collection, and I'm always like, I don't like the look of it. No, thanks. You know, I move on. But but to hear other people feel the same way. Dude, if, if, if I add an ugly card to my collection, I have to look at it. <laughs> uh, you should just stop right there. Yeah, that's it. I, what more needs to be said? You know, are we going to abuse our eyes for the sake of, you know, satisfying something that's, you know, 
No, we're just not going to do that. Flex. The Instagram flex is more important than your eyeballs. Now, with that said, you know, the thing that's tricky here is that what looks nice is very subjective and our opinions can evolve over time. Yeah. Whereas, like, what's historically important, that's, that's uh, intersubjective. It's consensus-driven. And it's really not something that changes very often. So sometimes <clears throat> I have to allow for the possibility that, like, a card might grow on me. Or its importance <laughs> does trump the fact that I don't think it's the best-looking card. Is there a card you can think of off the top of your head where... Yes. You've been drawn to, like, I should own this because it's important, but, damn it, I just don't want to because it's ugly? So I have something similar. It's not a, it's not a I should own this. It's a, like... It, it's the 96 Flare Legacy, uh, Flare Showcase Legacy MJ. Uh, I believe it's the Row 2. Here, I'll, let, let me just like pull it up so we can all see what I'm talking about. Because this is the card that Christina binned on a crossover episode one night. And I always thought that like I didn't really like the way that Flare Showcase cards look. Like, everybody loves these. They're like, oh, the photography is so great. Blah, blah, blah. But, like, <laughs> I never liked these. Uh, but, you know, I'm, like, I'm looking for Jordan Grails. Cards are ridiculously priced. And I was just like, yeah, this is cool. Like, let me try this out. And now I love the look of this card, especially mm -hmm. once I had it in hand as opposed to looking at scans. It's one of my favorite looking Jordans. Really love, the, like, the, the blue holofoil that they used on the Legacy Collection. So... That's literally an example of that, where I, my opinion did change on it once I got the card. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tasty Card Sandwich <laughs> would like to know, why do some people cover the PSA cert when they post their cards? It just seems unnecessary. What am I missing? Uh, uh, just, you know, privacy. I mean, we do that on card ladder so um i don't think it like really actually matters that much but you never know like some people just for privacy reasons maybe they don't want you to know when it was graded or they don't want you to know that you bought, bought a copy that was previously went through some other like there's many reasons that a person might want to uh cover it up so you just kind of have to like respect that i guess yeah and by the same token, the, the seller has to respect that people think that that's a little suspect. Mm. Uh, they're entitled to that opinion because a lot of the reasons why somebody would cover that cert number are yeah. not good reasons. You know, like uh, why, you know, like some of the reasons that you just pointed out. Uh, why shouldn't a buyer be able to know that? But Luigi makes a point here, which is that the point is uh, some people are worried about uh, counterfeiters making fake slabs, looking at the cert number and saying, like, oh, I know that this card has this cert number, so if I make a fake slab and I want to make a fake of this card mm. in the fake slab, I can use the cert number and it'll work. And they can steal the barcode, theoretically, too. So that's that's a legitimate reason to black it out. Um, go ahead, Christina. Can you just explain why Card Ladder blocked it out? Why we block it out? Because Card Ladder is not about a, a particular card that's for sale. Card Ladder is about a, a generic representation of the particular card in that particular grade. Yeah. And when and also we don't own those cards that are in our, like, our photo. Right. So we make sure that we block it out because the people who do, do own the card could then get upset if we use their stock photo. Mm -hmm. But also, when you click on the sales history and you go to the auction house or marketplace, those pictures will have the, the cert number unless it was blocked out by them. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, my judgment on blocking the cert is don't do it. For me personally, I don't do it. 
If I'm, I, I'm ready to insert breathe. If I'm buying a card and they block it, I'm like, uh, I'm not buying. Yep. You're hiding something. This is, exactly. this is weird. But if it's like a collector on their Instagram, I don't really care that much if they do it and they block it. I agree with that distinction. Okay. Northwoods Card Collector says, uh, I am so sick of seeing 86 player Jordans and Tom Brady championship tickets in every auction and every high end auction house. What is a card that you get tired of seeing? Or if you want to be more positive, no, we don't. What's one card? <laughs> What's one Let's try. Card? Nice try. What's one card you'd wish you'd see pop up for sale? All right. So, should we just complain a little bit more about this? I feel we. This is the yeah. frame. Yeah. Well, I'm sick of all these damn Peyton Manning cards showing up over <laughs> and over and over. Oh wait. Does that question ask her to collect paid money? My bad. Um, <laughs> what's another one? I'm sick of seeing the freaking LeBron RPA at a 99. Stop selling that goddamn card, Fair. says the guy Fair. who sold one. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Uh, all right. Dreamcast card says the <clears throat> hobby is full of merriment and joy around the holidays. I don't think you needed to add Android. I think you just said the hobby is full of merriment. I don't think you need to sort of add around the holidays. <laughs> or is it? Question mark. Exactly. Oh, tell us about your experience with trades and deals at this time of year. That's horrible. I've been bitching about it all night. <laughs> I want you to title this freaking episode. So something about like you know I'm into it for more or some crap. Can I bitch about something too? <laughs> Are you kidding? That's what this show exists for. Here we go. All right, Christina, just look away. <laughs> she hates when I do this. So I don't, I don't look. All right, there's a oh, no. on eBay that you know I've had my eye on. This is the first year optic gold Jokic PSA ten. I offered a thousand, and the person, which is a fucking lot of money, and the person said no reply, no reply, just let it expire. So then I sent fifteen hundred as my second yeah. offer. God, and they declined. They 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 actually took the time to decline this time, but uh, they declined. And you know this card has, has zero sales. I, the, you can look at like what the green has sold for, which is out of five, and there's just no world where this card is worth the asking price of three grand, and that's part of the reason why nobody's purchased it yet, obviously, and uh, yeah. So it's a, the same bitch as mine. Yep. Excellent. We're just complaining. I mean, this is the my this is my favorite thing to complain about, like how we can't buy more cards. This is, that's the great what a great thing to complain about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, it could be worse. Maybe it's a you problem because I met up with another Maxi Kleba collector today, and I made some trades with her so that we could get closer to our rainbows. She did. She did some in-person dealing today. We went to a coffee house. Did you guys invite Maxi as well? He doesn't have anything to do right now. <laughs> Is he hurt? Yeah. Oh. He tore oh. his hamstring. He's out for like. He had to have surgery. Oh. He's up for months. Oh, shoot. I didn't know that. Yeah. He probably would have come, actually. Maybe. I don't know if it's so awkward. <laughs> no. I like how both of you are like, I don't want my... No, what? I don't want to actually hang out with these guys. I just want to collect their cards. Yep. Facts. <laughs> Dude, if so Lucas sat down at the table with the three of us at dinner, we'd all be like, uh, excuse me, are you lost? What are you doing? <laughs> Shouldn't you be recuperating? Go take an ice bath. Do I look like, like fuck? Do I look like a trainer for the Mavs? Get out of here. <laughs> I would honestly pretend. Can you even want a playoff series, bro? Come on. Huh? I would honestly pretend like I didn't know who he was. Yeah, I could see you trying to pull that off. I don't think it would work though. So the th oh! three of us. That was a good <laughs> hit. That was a direct hit. In this oh, story, I, she's like dying right now. Okay, all right. In, in this story, the three of us are at a hookah bar, and Luca walks up to him. That is 
that would increase our chances of seeing Luca. Go to a hookah bar, maybe a beer garden. Get to that Bill Simmons question. Now I'm ready for that one. Oh, the Bill Simmons question. Didn't I already ask that? Nope. There's two. You dumb. Let me see. It's what was the the Jokic Luca one? Oh, the, they did an episode about them. Dude, there's a lot of those questions. I usually just like I like Josh has no interest in talking about this, so I just push the answer to the bottom. All right, here it is. Uh, Mad City Collector. I know y'all listen to the BS podcast. I'm not calling it the BS podcast right now. It was that, but now I'm liking the direction a little bit more. He says, what do you think about Van's comments that Luca could be going down the path of James Harden? Oh, what a horrible player to be compared to. Unless he picks up his defensive intensity. Or is his offensive skill set so transcendent, a la Curry, that it will overcome his defensive liabilities? Also, does Jokic have to win a title to be on the same level as Magic and Bird? I don't think he said that exactly. I think he was saying, like, what he's doing right now reminds him of what Harden was doing in 2017 or 18, whatever that was. Mm-hmm. And so he's saying, like, Lucas still has a chance to, like, uh, surpass what that was in, in, like, the team aspect. I don't, I don't know that he was necessarily saying, like, that's his end game. He's just saying, like, so far that's what he's done. Right. Dude, James Harden, like – I don't know why people think it's an insult <laughs> to say, oh, you're like James Harden. Dude, please give me James Harden's MVP season. Please. Dude, how many – this is like one of the greatest seasons ever played. Please bring on uh, – I'll take as many James Harden seasons. Well, they're talking about, they're talking about like, playoffs. You know, does your do your stats go up in the playoffs? And Bill Simmons – and I forget the, the other guy's name on the pod – there was three of them. Did you listen to it? Yeah, it, it was uh, Van Lathan. Um, oh, I can't believe his name has escaped me because I like this guy. Yeah, me too. I can't remember his name either. New York. But uh, Bill and that guy were basically saying, like, all of these arguments suck because Luka and Jokic's stats go up in the playoffs. Like, their play gets better, so it's not a good comparison. And that's really all they were talking about. It was like, yeah, sure, the Harden regular season was great, but then he – uh, you know, he's had a lot of playoff stinkers, so. Yeah, which is true, but not true. Big Waz, that's who it is. Waz, Waz. Lambert, yeah. He, that's true, but it's not true because, oh, thank you. Because uh, uh, I'm pretty sure Harden averaged 35, 7, and 5 in a Western Conference Finals. Um, now, overall, his playoff yeah. stats are rough for his career, and he's had some really bad series. But, like, can we put some respect on James Harden? It just kills me that people are using him as, like, a sandbag. Like, right, oh, right. You're just, like, the MVP from five years ago. You suck. And, by the way, people, like, are acting like James Harden never got any respect. Dude, there are ESPN articles written calling him the greatest offensive player of all time. <laughs> James Harden. Barkley did it. Barkley called him that for, like, like three years James in a row. James Harden was wildly celebrated. So let's not act like he didn't get his flowers either. He got an MVP. He won a freaking MVP. Like, and also, the, so now going to the Jokic one, they didn't compare Jokic to Bird and Magic. They were talking about p- assembling the most fun team, and those are the three top choices that they made. They weren't comparing the three. It was building a team. Right. Yep. Yep. Why would you That's ever, right. ever try to – how would you ever try to compare Jokic and Larry Bird? I don't understand well, I can what sort of. <laughs> well, well, yeah, of course they're white, but like, what sort of, what sort of like argument? I just don't understand the merits behind trying to compare those two guys. Like, they're different eras, different positions, different everything. Comparing across the eras is wild, and and not it never you know we have to do it because we have to have these all time lists and stuff, and we have to contextualize stuff. But there are so many differences. You know, what if uh, what if we were limited to the players we could compare? You could only compare players if, for both players, at least 50% of their games played overlap with each other. So, like, if half of mm. my career overlapped with half of your career and we were NBA players, we would be compared because at least we're partially sharing. Remember that? 
the episode of Thinking Basketball that you had me listen to, where they're talking about like how the the three point like yeah. literally it's a different game. It's not even the same game anymore. It's yeah. literally a different game, and it was all shifted quickly during that like 2011 to 2015 range and it all happened in that little window so even your the thing you just said if you compare lebron's career when he played pre-2010 to someone 50 percent has played you know it's like even then it's going to be hard to compare agreed okay let me get off a couple other takes too uh one of them is this why does one game change the narrative on a player? You were talking about this with LeBron before. I'll talk about oh, it. Drives me nuts. This is Fucking so drives me stupid. Nuts. This is so stupid. He's he, he the game after him was similar to the thirty six games he played before or whatever. How many how many he's played this season? Thirty, I guess, or whatever. It's just one. It's an outlier performance. It's literally the type of thing that we should exclude when we analyze a player's capacity on the whole. It's an outlier. It's like a, it's like a sale of a Mahomes prism-based PSA 10 for 10 grand and the going market is 3,500. It's an outlier. It's, it is an outlier excluded. Okay, and then now the, the other one can I, can is I fun. Can I continue that rant first before yeah. you change? Yeah. Okay. They, they were talking about this on the Simmons pod about how they were building up Kyrie because of that one fucking shot. So <laughs> if Kyrie, who's a 35% three-point shooter, missed that one three, which, by the way, if you remember that game, nobody scored in, like, a three-minute window. Like, fucking Kyrie missed one, LeBron missed three, Curry missed four, like, and then Kyrie made one, and now all of a sudden he's MJ in the finals clutch. <laughs> so, like, yeah. one fucking shot, I'll get it, take your thing to the extreme. People get to the point where it's like, if he misses one shot or he makes one shot, that somebody, changes the trajectory of their careers? Like, what the fuck? Somebody was like, yeah, didn't Steve Kerr do that too? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Terrible comparison again. Because, oh, my God. That was pretty good. And then, okay, oh. and then this this is where I'm going to zag. Most people are going to disagree with this. That's fine. Russillo and Simmons have been trashing Luca all year because, oh, it's a heliocentric play style, and they don't like to watch that style of basketball. I could not disagree more. I I love when there is one player who is kicking your ass. And on the other side of it, when there's one player who's kicking our ass, it is the most demoralizing shit as a fan ever. And the, the one that I'm going to talk about for this to illustrate it is when Donovan Mitchell had like 30 points in the first half at the AAC this year, that was the most I've ever been offended, triggered, slighted, because it was awful. Yeah. It was fucking awful. I'd much rather have, like, five guys make four shots apiece than one fucking guy make 20. So I support heliocentric, heliocentrism, and I, as a fan, I love it. As a, especially the fan of that team and that player. So I don't – this whole thing, like, oh, I don't really like it. Fuck that. I love it. And the critique of, like, oh, it doesn't work in the playoffs, yeah, maybe for players who exhaust themselves playing that way, who are constantly running, constantly busting their ass, there are other types of players like Luca who take eight seconds to get the ball across half court. The, he, he trots. I don't think he's broken into a sprint once this year. He runs less – he plays like 37 minutes a game. He runs less miles than like 60 other players per game. So it's it, – the critique is not accurate for him because he doesn't move around much. He just is sort of trotting, trotting around. Okay, that's my sag. I'm done. Good. Feel better? I feel better. All right. Oof, we still have, okay. We had a lot of, uh, still a lot of questions to go here. All right. Perimeter Collectibles says, oh, okay, this is like a couple of card letter questions that came in. Uh, Perimeter Collectibles says, where has card letter seen the most traction for international adoption from non-US users, which like we referenced this question a little earlier. 
which areas present the best opportunities. Like, first of all, we are not going to disclose demographic or any information about our users. Let's and, try. And we don't even know where our users come from anyway. Yeah, we, uh, we pride ourselves on the privacy <laughs> of our members and users. Yeah. And we do not break that privacy. Okay. Period. Right. But with that said, uh, we do, you know, talk to people on our personal accounts and stuff like that are is josh do you want to take a stab at this question like i was just thinking australia okay is the first one that popped in my head and i don't know if that's because we have a lot of them in the crossover chat i just it's easy to find them because they say mate i'm not sure <laughs> they do say mate they definitely say mate yeah, Australia has, a, I think, a very strong hobby population. I've always been acutely aware of the Aussies because there are a few who collect Michael Jordan. So there always, you go. always have been aware of them. Yeah, but I'm talking about always, like going back to 2016. Today, like, you, you, can't, you can't go anywhere on Instagram without seeing an Aussie or two. And if I can get on a different tangent for a second. Canadians, all right? Is there a Canadian <laughs> down every hobby rabbit hole? I just need to know. <laughs> I, I have never been in a clubhouse room in this hobby. Even if there's six people there, there's at least one Canadian. Always. It's almost like a fucking conspiracy. Uh, they just like to, they like to monitor what's going on. I think they all and they all each talk other. to each other. Yeah. Yes. They all know each Is other. it like how, it's like how all the, big movies, all the big name actors lately are like English or Canadian. You're like, where are the fucking Americans? They're always like from England or Canada. <laughs> I, I don't, I have not noticed that, but I don't watch a ton of like contemporary entertainment. So I'll take your word. I'll take your, but you know what else? When the Canadians assemble, they don't talk in that annoying accent. They only talk that way to piss us off. <laughs> I I wonder if it's the same thing for Australians too, but I think they actually do have that accent at all times. So we found your next trigger. Yeah, dentists, kids, and Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> and memorabilia collectors. Yeah, the list is growing, isn't it? All right. It's it's gonna be tough to keep track of all these. It's not point. big enough. Your list is too small. That's I'm, that's my that's my thing. Well, look, hobby goals for twenty twenty three, grow that list. Right. Yeah, everyone's lists are like, oh, be more positive in 2023. You know, get healthier and do. Ours is like, get meaner and hate people more. That's ours. <laughs> Mine is tell more people to fuck her off. <laughs> As if you, because yeah. like she never does that now. So eat more pizza. That's the only thing I want to do more of. <laughs> um, let's try to not do any uh, facial or head hair shaving for a year no i'm out no way <laughs> i'm working on a month already <laughs> are you really well do you have seen this a month uh yeah it's about at least a month all right bang <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> go look at the cross you can just see my unkemptness growing as the crossovers go <laughs> There's one chart that's still going up into the red. <laughs> Bangers and Wax says, now that the full pop report for each card is on card ladder, parentheses, thank you, double parentheses, you're welcome. How long until each sale has a score that shows the likelihood that a card was shilled? Uh, good question. Mm -hmm. We try to uh, not let the shilled sales come in. Although we're not always perfect about that. So we kind of already do have that, Bangers and Wax. If you look at the purgatory file on each card's profile, you can see you sales of the history that we think are shilled. In sales history, this is, some, this is another thing we'll have to work on for 2023, Josh. A shilled meter, a shilled score. Shilled meter? I... Uh. <laughs> I get hesitant about something like that for some reason. Hmm. Like when people are like, oh, this looks fishy, remove it 
from sales history, I'm usually like, is there a green check on it? And they're like, no. I'm like, then what's the problem? Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is like, what if members were able to say, I was the buyer or seller of that card, and it's like member verified. We get those coming in from time to time. Yeah, I'll delete those. But like, since. Yeah, if someone's like, hey, that was mine, it's in sales history, like MC Sports Cards, Michael messaged me and say, the guy didn't pay for this, can you remove it from sales history? No problem. It was unpaid, yep. it's not a sale, it not, should not be in sales history, done. But if someone's like complaining about their card values going down, then I'm usually like, eh, was it fake? Yeah, agreed. Uh, there are like obvious stupid ones, like, uh, a hoops base card for ninety eight thousand dollars, you know, we can delete those. We delete those. Sure. But there's there's a lot of situations where if if there is not concrete proof that it was unpaid or that it was a scam of some sort or that it never got shipped, like it's gonna stay in there. Yeah. Well, I, people I just like, like people have to be thoughtful enough to make intelligent decisions on their behalf. They can't look to any app to dictate everything when it comes to pricing. Yeah. I'd rather err, I'm saying all this because I'd rather err on the side of having more data than less data. True as well. Because the yeah. argument being like, oh, that's making my negotiations tougher. Well, like get better at searching sales history and find more than just that one comp and you, you know, Agreed. Dude, Trey Young, did his cards get really <laughs> Like Yeah, just go to Lameem James' stories. That's what I was going to say. Like, like, if there was ever, like, is Lameem, like, exaggerating? No, he's not. Like, it's a problem how many of his cards end up being won by zero feedback bidders or private bidders, and then they get relisted. Why can't that guy shoot threes anymore? Well, he had a similar stretch to this during his rookie year when, like, for the first half of the season, he was not shooting threes. So He's, like, really bad, like, barely 30%. Yeah, it's been rough. He's still producing at a dumb <clears throat> clip. Though. He's still producing, like, 27 and 10. Yeah, he had 27 and 9 tonight, and he made zero threes. It's like, what the <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. He's still putting up numbers. And, like, there's lots of, you know, NBA blog rumors that uh, he wants out. So. I'll take him on any of my teams. You will take him? I mean, I kind of want to take my victory lap on him, but he's still oh, I a think good you already, I, Yeah, look, that, <laughs> that victory lap's always going to be but his like value is dipping enough where if you can get a good contract or a good trade, like yeah. you know, buy low. What yep. about the rumors that he's bad for the locker room, and that's why Atlanta wants to get rid of him? Yeah, I heard that one too. Like he basically got the last coach out. Now he doesn't like this coach, and it's like, what do you like, dude? <laughs> well, and this coach. The rumor on this coach from Shams is that he wants to resign, and they're like, please, just finish the year. McMillan wants to resign. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of trade. Which is something I've never heard of. I've never heard of a coach wanting to resign. Yeah. And then the front office and the team are like, "No, please stay." But yeah, the Shams reported that today. Yeah. It makes you wonder what the fuck is happening in Atlanta. Nothing good. Yeah. They lost to the fucking Lakers, so can't be good. <laughs> there, no. If LeBron's gonna go to 47, 10, and 9 mode, you're going to lose the Lakers. So, But they're uh, they're 17 and 19 now, the Hawks are, which, like, Ooh. it's not where they wanted to be. No man's land. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Art Connoisseur says, I'm too lazy to read. So how does Cardlighter incorporate? It's a good thing I'm not too lazy to read. Uh, how does Cardlighter incorporate sales volume, parentheses, the number of times a card sold, 
into the card letter value. And the easy answer to this is that we don't. We, uh, sales volume does not impact card letter value at all. Card letter value is simply based on uh, the last sale of the card multiplied by the rate of change in that index since the sale, in the relevant index since the sale. So the card sold for 100 bucks a month ago, and that player's index is down 20% since then, then that card's CL value is going to be $80. Sales volume is we, not factor. We, we toyed with that when we first built that. Do you remember? We were like, should we use the last two, last three? And every time we did it, it always came out weird. And every time we did the last one, it always seemed to work out better. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yep. And just, in look, there's never going to be a methodology of predicting prices that's a direct hit. So when that's the case, if a very simple methodology works, just like a one function, uh, you know, a one, uh, a function that just has one task you perform, just multiply it A by B, then just that, the simplicity of that carries weight. <laughs> Keeping things simple are generally speaking better. And, you know, Bearing in mind that like value projections like a CL value, you know, these are these are uh, fully transparent estimates. <laughs> Trey Young is the Domino's pizza of the NBA. <laughs> what do you think about that? I, I, I'm not sure how you can. I'm not sure. It's just funny to read it out. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, what's poppin' Maine? Says, what are the best ways to reach out to an eBay seller? that bought a card that you want for your PC for $5, and now they're asking $150 for the card. <laughs> oh, man. First, I don't know. Just, just, just laugh it off. Look, I, I, saw, I don't want this card, but there's a Jokic rookie that sold raw for $700, $600 to $700. The per person won it, sent it to PSA, got it graded authentic, listed it on eBay, Guess how much they listed it for? Remember, they won it raw for $600 to $700, and then they put it in a PSA authentic slot. $600. $600. Yeah. No, I'm saying they wanted $600,000. Like two no, grand? The answer is not $600,000. Two grand? Four grand. And I followed it just to see what happens with this card, and they offered, they made an offer. To everybody who's watching the cards, that you know the seller can send that over, thirty five hundred. Oh, what a deal! That's a lot. That's expensive plastic, by the way. Thirty five hundred. So. So I don't know. We get. It. So I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> we keep getting this question, Hoj. Like, uh, uh, help me negotiate and get this. I, I don't. There's no answer to this. We can't help you. Yeah. Like this happens to everybody. Like, there's no magic answer. I've been swinging and whiffing on trying to answer this question for months. So if it hasn't been answered yet, sorry. It just. We think is that where Wiffle Ball comes from? Don't know. Don't. I've never heard someone use whiffing, like in a sentence like that. <laughs> a whiff? You never heard of a whiff? Whiff? No. Okay. Uh, like smell? That is an alternative definition of whiff, but there's another definition of whiff that refers to missing something. Yeah, I've never heard someone use it in that context. Right, well, welcome to life. <laughs> welcome to the English language. Welcome to the English language. Well, in vocabulary. <laughs> All right. Steve Armwax says, Guy bought a Herbert rookie for $650 two years ago. Had it on eBay for two k for years. Good. And then I bought it from him for six fifty this year. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, the answer. Okay. That's the answer to that. That's the magic bullet. Yes. You have to wait fucking two years. Wait it out. That's 100% right. I bought, you know, and I told this when I, like, I wrote a reply to him when he sent this in, and I said, I've literally seen cards rot on eBay for five plus years. Just overpriced to a, an absurd extent, and whoever owns it clearly doesn't need to liquidate it at the market value. And it just rots and rots and rots and rots. <laughs> I bought 86 Flair Jordan two years ago for 750K. Sold it last month for 55. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
Okay. All right. So, look, yeah, I mean, that's your really your only recourse here is to wait it out. <coughs> um, sucks, man. That, that it, it, it's, it, if it's any consolation, this isn't new. <laughs> and this isn't going away. No. People are always, right. always, always going to do this. All right. Heat Collector would like to know, are you guys fans of NBA hoops? The, the product? The product. Or like the generic term for basketball. No, the cards. No. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say no as well. Although we will open a box or two of it every year, just because it's always the cheapest basketball product. Plus, it usually comes out during slow. And it comes, yeah, it comes out very early. Yeah. How are they able to keep that lineage going from the hoops of yesteryear? They make it come out early so people are desperate to buy it. No, no, no. no. Hoops was a thing like in the 90s. How is it yeah. still – how are they able to keep that naming? Well, they've uh, – they, Panini has acquired a few different brands. Yeah. Uh, not okay. Just, they, they own a few different brands. Uh, one of the Donruss. First, yeah, Donruss is an example. One of the first LaMelo ball cards that Card Ladder ever tracked – was his hoops raw? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this is what the chart looks like. So, like, this card started off uh, around 170 bucks, quickly fell to a hundred, fell into the 70s, the 50s, the 30s, the 20s, the tens, the sub tens, a couple of dollar 99s in there. Oh my God. Now it's a dollar card now? <laughs> now it's a dollar card. Dude, I definitely remember us being on the show and being like, do not buy this card. It will go <laughs> to zero. Right. Like, that definitely happened. Yeah. And, you know, even the PSA 10, I mean, if you can believe it, the PSA 10 was sent for $2,000. Oh, I know. Who bought that one? <laughs> and now... You know, the PSA 10 has, you know, but it, and part of it is just the pop. I mean, the pop is 3,000. Yeah. <laughs> the pop once was just tiny. You know, the pop once was 145 we had it, and now it's 3,000. But, um, so, but yeah, but now this card, this card last sold for $28. Dude, that's an incredible thing that I didn't know any of this about. That's crazy. Oh, my God. Two thousand bucks. What the fuck. Moment right. of silence for the Lamelo balls. Yeah, pour one out. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ricky Puyito has a two-word topic for us: Barack Purdy. Mm. What do you have to say about Barack Purdy? I would say go to eBay and buy all of his cards because you'll get rich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, look, Brock Purdy is extremely interesting because is he going to be quarterbacking if Jimmy Garoppolo is ready to go for the playoffs? Is he going to be quarterbacking when Trey Lance is ready to go next year? Oof. Is he, What if Tom Brady wants to come to the 49ers next year? Like, what does the future hold for this last pick in the most recent NFL draft because it can go a lot of ways and most of them aren't very good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, once he played four games and they have like literally the best roster and the best offensive weaponry in the NFL and he's playing well. Oh my God. I'm shocked. Can I ask a question? You just did. I know. I hate when you do that. So like, do they often call the person who's drafted last Mr. Irrelevant? Because that seems really disrespectful. Not just to, like, the actual person who's drafted, but, like, everyone who doesn't get drafted as well. So, like, you're not even relevant enough to be relevant at that point. Here, I'm going to write down the email address you can send your complaints. Okay, I would appreciate to that. To social media. Okay, perfect. And maybe you'll get everybody to stop. I they give him like a jersey. With the, they give him a jersey, and on the back it says "Mr. Relevant." Yeah. Like they always do that. Yeah. What the fuck is that? 
Embrace it. I, like, when I first saw it, because I don't watch the draft, that's fucking boring. But, like, when I first saw that clip, I thought it was, like... You thought his last name was TikTok. irrelevant. You no, thought his last I name was irrelevant. It, no, I thought it was, like, a TikTok joke. Like, oh. like, two women, and I was like, what the fuck are two women doing up there for the NFL draft? That's yeah. sexist. Uh, I said it. And, because there's no female coaches or or female commissioners. So I was like, what's going on here? And I really thought it was like a joke because he was the last one picked. And then someone told me that that video is real. And I was like, wow, way to be a dick, NFL. Way to be a dick. Okay. Do you have a question? <laughs> She just said, way to be a dick, and you're, like, being a dick now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I blame it on the NFL. <laughs> You've been... Are you excited for the NFL season to kick up the playoffs here soon? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. You're in, like, full basketball mode, but I'm not there yet. I'm still excited for these NFL playoffs. Wait, is the NFL still going? Dude, dude did you know that the Dolphins were... Like three and zero, oh, then three and three, then eight and three, then eight and seven. Yeah, that's and uh, <laughs> their loss has fluctuated with two as brain waves. So, <laughs> well, their last three games have been against like really tough teams. Well, dude, or four the, losses. The, They've had four in a row. The discrepancy between when they put up twenty points in the first half when Tua did not have his head smashed into the ground. Yep. Versus zero points in the second half and three interceptions in the fourth quarter after his head smashed into the ground. Yeah. I think we cracked the case. We cracked the case. Yeah. So, like, I mean, the guy, God, man, I just – officially two concussions, but I think most people believe he's at three. Yep. That's brutal. Dude, three in a season is, like – I know people don't want to talk about it because he's young, but, like, that's almost career-ending. It's just too many. You have to start thinking about that kind of stuff. You do, man. You do. It sucks it's... because they, they, they kind of suck without him. Yeah. Teddy Bridgewater is a, a fine backup. Uh, but Tua was – Tua did some special stuff this year, <laughs> but, you know. Damn, man, like, he's just, oof. It's bad. It's, it's unfortunate. All right. Uh, Josh L. Moses 7. So I think it's the first time I've ever seen that name. It says, uh, once Fanatics begins operating with the new licensing in a couple of years, what's going to replace National Treasures, Flawless, etc. as the premium Chase products? You think the They'll make new ones, or they're going to try to maybe buy those brands, or what? Is that what we're asking? Yeah, I think their preferred route would be to acquire those brands. But if they can't get them, then yeah, they are going to need to, you know, they'll probably try and use like Topps Dynasty and some of those brands. But mm. they're going to need. If I would think they would try to follow in the footsteps that Exquisite originally created, and then sort of NT and Flawless picked up the baton and continued. Yeah, no matter what they do, if they try to make their own, people are going to hate it so oh, of much. Course. Prepare They're for going like to absolutely hate it. Five years of just hating whatever it is. You're so right about that. Okay. <laughs> I want NT back. And then people were like complaining when we had NT. It's like, you can't win. That's the most hobby. That's the surest bet in this hobby. We don't know what way these markets are going. We don't know a lot. But little people in the hobby hate anything new. Guarantee. Calling <laughs> <laughs> something to bitch about. <laughs> That's the lock of the year. All right, let's just put in one last question. Oh, perfect. Thank God. I really wanted to get to this one. This was like my benchmark to get to. Yeah. And I'm going to have to skip about five questions to get to it, but. LSU Tiger Collector 65 says, 
what is the better upside play in 2023? <laughs> Shit beasts <laughs> or crypto dick butts? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> It's appropriate that we end the final show of 2022, and this is the final question. It sums Ooh. up 2022. This is a pro shit beast pod, isn't it? I think we are team shit beasts, but you know there are a few crypto dick butt <laughs> advocates. In our well, audience, can you right? refresh my memory of what each of these look like so I can yeah, that's good. At least go off of aesthetics? Yeah, we would be hypocrites if we didn't consider the aesthetics. Of each of these after what we've said on the podcast today. <laughs> so, well, let's see if we can. I'm not doing the garbage can thing either. Okay, this uh, is. I don't need to. This is a. You know, right. <laughs> this guy's on fire. All right, let's go. This is ridiculous. All right. So. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> this isn't real, is it? This actually happened this is, last year. This is still happening. No, it's. It's not. People don't buy these anymore. You're lying. All right. <laughs> these are the shit beasts. All right. Dude, so all right. someone's going to make a documentary about the different color squared backgrounds of all these goddamn... This was a thing for, like, months. Remember, dude? Like, all we would see are these colored background variations of the same fucking pictures. All right. <laughs> it's a good point. All right. These are the crypto dick butts. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see how they got their names, actually, if you look at them. Do you remember when I was digging through the V Friends and I found like 12 penguins with a brown background or whatever? Yes. I was like, I thought they had different variations. These are literally the same thing. I mean, look, here's somebody's collection. I might have to check. Change my answer. These are pretty good. Do you like the crypto dick butts? You're going with these? Um. God. They're so bad. They're less like deep. They're less graphically ugly than. Right. Because they have less detail. Because they have, It's because they have less detail. Look at this one. This, they don't make you want to throw up looking at them. This one speaks to me a little bit. <laughs> what? Which part of it? <laughs> Oh, well, I like the glasses. He's like going to see a this is, Michael Jackson in 3D or something. This is the me of crypto dick butts, I think. Um, that's that's Christina. What? Isn't that just, just like these guys are copying the uh, the punks and they're making? Am I am I saying words that make, make sense? Yeah. This I see what you're saying. I said this is stiff arm wax. And there's you. And by, by process of elimination, there's me. Great. I have a nerd or a little kid uh, spinny wheel hat. It's great. <laughs> look, I'm look, sorry. Look at the, the chat. Coolest one, but, uh... Look at the chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I'm going to go with shit beasts. Oh, even after that? Even after the aesthetics? Yeah, once you compared me to one of those things, I gotta go the other way. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta take the crypto dick books then. Well, I'll see you uh, in hell. Because <laughs> <laughs> neither of us are gonna win. Isn't that the punishment if we lose baseball uh, footballs, we have to buy one of those? Oh, oh my god. I would, dude, I still don't know how to buy those stupid things. Are you serious? No, if I told you to buy one right now, would you know how to do it? Yeah, you just got to queue up your wallet to your crypto. <laughs> the punishment should be one of you has, like, the loser has to make an, an NFT run. Oh. Yeah, like, you have to make, like, at least 10 different NFT background, like, color background people. Yeah, fancy. Gary V did, and I'll draw a penguin, and I'll put a brown background on ten of the same thing. I win. Uh, I think you need a meta mask. You forgot about the uh, meta mask, I was about which is like a, a meta wall. Well, one of them was literally like, get this Chrome plugin, and it's like, what? Hell no. We know all about Chrome plugins in this hobby, and we don't trust them. That's insane. 
Uh, do you remember that? It was like a MetaMask yeah. Chrome plugin. Is how you I, can I your, definitely remember your, that. Yeah. Back <laughs> back when I was doing all my NFT invests. <laughs> <laughs> You need to be able to log in with your NFT wallet. Right. Yeah. It's key. It's key. All right. That's the last crossover. Oh, so can we settle on title? Here are the options. Snipe fart. Mm. Snipe fart. Colt flex. A card inside a card. Beer goggling. And, and, <laughs> shill, and, shill, <laughs> and shill Peter. I just like when you read them all because it gives me the giggles of all the weird stuff we talked about. This episode hit a high note of weird shit. All right, read them, read them one more time. All right, one more time. Snipe fart. Colt flex. A card inside a card. Beer goggling. Chill meter. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. I like beer goggling. That one makes me giggle. <laughs> I guess that's the one that got you when I read them. Well, because we talked a lot about that tonight, about aesthetics uh, maybe i'm wrong we usually go with the first one but i feel like pack nicholson gets a lot of them let's let's share the wealth <laughs> okay so we're gonna go we want to go beer goggling christina doesn't like that name do you want do you want to veto his <laughs> you, i i would just throw in my name in the hat you guys can argue we can keep going what do you want christina if you had to pick snipe fart cope flex a card inside a card and shill meter I have, my vote is a card inside a card. My vote is show me here. Oh, my God. So we have, oh, oh what do we do? How are we going to solve this? We have to choose the one no one voted for. Well, that's Snipe Fart or Cope Flex. Oh, shit. I thought they were on the board. Cope Flex? I don't want to do that one because then it seems like we're, I just don't like to get into topics where we're talking about deceased people. I'd just rather stay away from that one. Fair. Right. It's just Snipe Fart. Snipe Fart's funny. Snipe Fart is good. It was the first one. First instinct. <laughs> first one. Okay, all right. Snipe Fart it is. All right. See you guys on the other side of 2023. Happy New Year! A lot has changed since Card Ladder began. We started with 500 cards in our database, and now we have over 3 million cards and over 30 million sales. For anyone asking who was the best, we put in our hands up. With Card Ladder's sales history feature, we have virtually every card in our system. If the card you are looking for ever sold on one of these platforms, you can find it using Card Ladder's sales history, and you can add a card to your collection with just one click. My time. My time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Plus, every card, no matter the last time it's sold, has an estimated value that we calculated using our state-of-the-art player indexes. Unlike other apps, when you see Card Ladder's verified check mark, that means a researcher personally vetted each and every sale. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. We know what you want because Card Ladder was created by collectors for collectors. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. Join the innovators, not the imitators. Card Ladder 2.0, constantly innovating. Try it for free. See why Card Ladder is the industry leader in sports card data. We know what it takes to be reaching the top. Card Ladder 2.0.